Short-term rentals are great, but what every guest wants is that combination of an authentic experience that feels a little more natural, feels like I'm part of the fabric of, you know, the location where I am, or I'm like at the beach, I'm in the mountains, it's a great location, unique property, but a predictable experience. What's up, everybody? My name is Mike Shogren here with my co-host, Emmanuel Pani. We're part of a group of specialized real estate investors you've probably never heard of. We didn't start with deep pockets or wealthy families, and we don't rely on 401ks, mutual funds, or traditional real estate investing. In fact, many of us don't even own the properties that fund our freedom. If you ask the money experts out there, they'd say what we do is impossible, yet it's happening every single day. It's happening through a new niche called short-term rentals. We are Short-Term Rental Nation, and these are our secrets. What's going on, STR Nation? Welcome back to another episode of the Short-Term Rental Secrets Podcast. I am your host, Mike Shogren, here with my main man and brother from another mother, Mr. Emmanuel Pani. What's up, B? My brother, so good to see you. Second episode of the day, which is always good good news for me. Uh, yeah, man, I'm excited for this this one. This this guest here saved, like, changed our business, so I'm excited to have him on. It's a second-time offender, just in a different role this time. So... Yeah, but let's let's dive in, man. I'm I'm pumped. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. I want to I want to yeah. squeeze out as much as we can. So today, uh, on the show, we've got Jeremy Gull. So Jeremy is a serial entrepreneur with a history of delivering great software products to vacation rental operators over the last 15 years. In 2006, he founded FlipKey, where he was responsible for all professionally managed inventory. And grew the platform to one of the world's largest vacation rental businesses before TripAdvisor acquired them in 2013. He's currently the founder and CEO of Breezeway. Love Breezeway, a property care and operations platform that helps coordinate, communicate, and verify detailed work and service. Started in 2016, Breezeway software and mobile app helps thousands of short-term rental managers and hospitality operators increase their operational efficiency eliminate hours of manual work, and boost service revenue. Jeremy's been featured on the Today Show, discussing vacation home rental safety and promoting quality standards for the vacation rental industry. He's an avid traveler and vacation rental advocate. He's a regular contributor to the VRM Intel and other travel industry publications. So without further ado, Jeremy, welcome to the show, sir. Great to be here, STR Nation. I love it. Love it, man. Well, we're glad that you're here. So before we get into all the goodness with Breezeway, I would love to kind of backtrack and hear about how you how you got into FlipKey back in the day. Because this is really before like the whole Airbnb wave and everything else with like taking off with short term rentals. Like walk us through that journey and how you built up like a massive company. Yeah, I think um, like like all good entrepreneurs, you could be a little naive at the beginning about what you're getting into and. Um... We were thinking about utilization of property and, um, you know, urban rentals, people traveling a lot. How could you use this space? The sharing economy was a brand new thing. People were trying to figure out how to share their cars and, you know, could you rent my car from me? Parking spaces, all of these things. And um, so we were thinking about home rentals. Um, and then we went down to a VRMA conference in, um, in, Virginia. And we, we noticed there was this really interesting dynamic between rent by owners and property managers and property managers really struggling to help people understand what their brand promise was and how good they were, right? As property managers and rent by owners were being mixed in on um, VRBO, this was even pre home away, pre Airbnb days, nobody had good branding to understand you know, people would put up testimonials and quotes, no reviews. And so we got into the business thinking about guest reviews and how really good operators could differentiate themselves because at the time that didn't really exist. Now we sort of take it for granted, right? Somebody stays in your, stays in your place, you're going to get Google reviews, reviews on whatever platform they were on, et cetera, um, wherever they came from. But at the time, 2006, it was pretty crazy. There was no online bookings. It was really a different it was really a different industry. Um, and that's how we got into it. We thought we could really do something impactful um, with a marketplace play. We grew it up to about 600,000 listings, started an early partnership with TripAdvisor, and um, the rest is kind of history. 
it's amazing. Six hundred thousand listings. Hot damn, hot damn. And this is like in two thousand and six. So like yeah. that. That's that's what's more like that's really impressive. Is is back then, and so like you do that, and you're like great. Hopefully you rested for a second, right after you you got yeah. got out of there. And then where where did Breezeway come from? Yeah, I caught my breath for a little bit. Um, had a couple kids. The uh, um, <laughs> you know I we worked with thousands of managers, and um, these people we were really close to them. We built great relationships with our customers. That was always part of the strategy at Flipkey. It's part of the strategy at Breezeway too, which is to like really build a tight relationship with our customers. Um, and so these people were, you know, were my friends and I, um, started talking with them about their business, about you know, things they were struggling with. And I developed this thesis around the fact that, you know, marketing was kind of solved, uh, between the, between the OTAs at this point, or the work you could do on your own, your own website, uh, between the two, like the marketing side was kind of covered, uh, but that operationally. I felt like this was a real, and what I heard from property managers was this was a real big challenge. Like, how do they keep servicing the unit? How do they make sure properties are clean? And remember during this time, like, so Flipkey was like 2006 to 2013. The industry changed dramatically. It moved to online bookings. Now it was even harder to differentiate yourself on the front end. So the way to differentiate yourself was kind of on the, on the back end and think about like, how can I differentiate the guest experience from the service that I provide? Um, or how can I really please my owners and help my owners understand like what they're paying for as a property manager, if it's not all of your own inventory. Um, and that was sort of the genesis of the idea it was like, Hey, you know what? Like service and quality is going to become this very important thing in short term and vacation rentals and people are going to need some advanced tools to do it well because it's can be a thin margin business yeah yeah i'm I'm curious <clears throat> how did it start like what were the product features or like because i guarantee it's expanded quite a bit since the beginning so like what was like the original thing that you guys were really focused on was it like the cleaning aspect or like wh which piece did you guys tackle first and then obviously it's expanded quite a bit yeah, I'll give you the real story. Most people probably don't know this, but um, so I started and I was thinking, um, what would it be like to sort of dog food the product yourself and like and be a property manager? So I would, if you lived in the Boston area, and you knew me or you knew each other tangentially and you need something done at your house, I wanted to try and coordinate it for you between service vendors. So even if you already knew who you wanted to have like, clean your chimney or, you know, do a kitchen remodel, do a new bathroom. Um, I would basically babysit the project and act as the property manager in between you and the vendors and you'd pay me and I'd let the payment flow through just so I could understand more of this like service engagement and what it was like. Um, and so then the first thing that we built was really an inspection product, an inspection tool. And the reason why we did that was the thought process was if I could come in and help you with one aspect of your home and while I was there, I quickly do an inspection and I could gather 20 or 30 additional pieces of information about your home, I could leverage that information into more services later, right? Mm -hmm. um, because we were trying to drive a wedge between kind of like what it's like to be a property manager and what it's like if you're just an individual service professional. So inspections was first, um, a nice little piece of inspection software. Um, and yeah, it's ballooned uh, a lot since then. So why don't we just talk about that real quick of like, what does Breezeway encompass now? And then we could talk about more of like the strategy around why this stuff is so important. Yeah. So now we touch everything. Now the idea is, we touch everything on the property. So all the back office operations, if you're going to be in the property from cleaning, recurring maintenance, maintenance on a turnover and inspection, guest services, you'll coordinate, you'll schedule it, coordinate it, validate that that work's happening through Breezeway. Whether you're a really big company with 7,000 units in Denmark or you know one or two units and you're a really small professional host. 
Um, so that's a big part of it on the operations side. Another piece of it is guest messaging, um, which we think, you know, messaging is super important. It's a marketing initiative when you're trying to get repeat guests. It's a marketing initiative when you get an inquiry and you're trying to get people down the booking funnel. But from about one day before they arrive and they're going to be your guest in property, it turns into an operational initiative because now you have to engage with that guest. Um, and you know, you don't want to be pen pals. You're not writing to each other just for fun. Like if the guest is writing back, it's usually there's a request, there's a problem, there's a question, there's okay. operational action, right? That's going to come from that. So if you can tie that messaging really tight to the operations platform, you could drive all sorts of efficiency and, um, automation out of that. So we do a ton around that as well. Um, and now we're getting into call services and actually trying to help support people with their after hours support so that you don't have to answer the phone. We'll answer the phone for you, turn it into a task, put it in breezeway. You wake up in the morning, you can handle it. You didn't have to answer the phone if it wasn't an emergency. Hot damn, hot damn, whole, a whole lot. And what I tell people is you know, as they're getting into this and, you know, if they want to scale and get to a sizable portfolio and sizable income and different things, the, the amount of processes and back office, it's almost like a compounding effect for every unit that you add. And then it's like, once you hit like 10 units and then you go to 20, it's a different level. And then you go to 50, it's a totally different level. Then you go over hundred, whole different level. Right. And it's just like, if you don't have tools like this in place that can really streamline a lot of that back office, you're going to be running around pulling your hair out because if one thing breaks, it just has this like crazy spider web effect and it can get very overwhelming very quickly. Yeah, I think so. I think, um, I think people are waking up even, you know, even small operators are sort of waking up to the idea that there are tools that are available to them um, to embrace that can help them professionalize, ensure the quality. Everybody wants to be good, you know, maybe not everybody, but most people in STR, your, your STR nation, your audience for sure, self-selecting to learn, right? Like these are people who want to be great hospitality providers and they're seeking out solutions to be even better at what they do. And most people are like that. And now there's just, there's some great tools for each part of your business to help you. Um, cause it's a ton of manual work. Yeah. And, and so I, so we use it ourselves after the last, uh, the last time you guys came on the show, it was something in our business that we needed to help us kind of organize all the different units or all different cleaners. And we have cleaners in house. We have a lot of vendors that are in, in house. And what I want to share with, with our listeners, which I, one of the features that, for example, to me would be beneficial to a smaller host is the fact that like, Let's say you report an issue or a guest reports an issue through your guys' messaging. We can send update to the guests about the resolution of their issue automatically. And what I mean by that is like you report an issue, you get a text message that says, hey, we reported this issue. We're working on it. So and so started working on it. This is being resolved. This is done. This is finished. All of those are automated. So if you are a host that still has a nine to five or that has a family, Think about how often you spend time updating the guest about the resolution of an issue that they reported, which now Jeremy and Breezeway allow you to have that automatically done on your behalf. And not just that, you have a place where you have a record of everything that has happened with the property. And you can go in there and be like, the AC vendor went this day and did this. This is the receipt he said he added free on. He's back two weeks later something is wrong with the Freon, we need to analyze it. And it's all under one location, which again, guys, it doesn't sound like much, but it's where, especially on the smaller scale and even more on the larger scale, but especially on the smaller scale is where you make your money is in understanding and preemptively seeing what's wrong based on where the data is showing you. And as you grow, you have checklists that you can just replicate to help you get better. And then as you get issues reported by guests, we add a new checklist item, right? So let's say we never checked this and we're like, okay, great. A guest reports it. We go in there, we're like, add to checklist 
to check behind the grill at this property, there is this spot that gets really dirty. Yeah. Yeah. And the it, art is like, and it's amazing. And for our owners, when we go to a management client to help win our business, we have a 80 point checklist that helps us guarantee a five star review from your guest and a five star care of your property from us. How many people can say that? Yeah. And it's not a joke. I have an 80, an 80 thing checklist that it's updated regularly to your specific property. Yeah. Again, guys, whatever your business is, it just makes it better. Yeah. It's really cool. You hit on like three different, um, a couple, couple really cool value sort of like snippets that are pretty cool. Like the automated messaging is great. Um, and it just makes you look like, um, it makes you punch like way above your weight, you know, it's like, like because of the automated responses, but also, you know, it's really nice. You can set up this template. We call it like the, um, stay satisfaction message or like the property prep message where you can set it up one day after check-in automatically a message goes out. It's tokenized. So Michael gets a message that says like, Hey, Michael, hope you're enjoying the stay at six C way or whatever it is. And like, you know, just let me know if you have any questions. And the guest just gets it like a text message. Feels like you just texted them. It happened automatically. And it's just a nice light touch and, and they love it. And when it comes to owner acquisition, a trick that is really powerful. Um, and I think we thought this would be a powerful tool. Like the idea of, we do the checklists in a unique way that the larger your portfolio, the more they kind of scale because they self they kind of learn on their own. They learn every time you use it. Mm -hmm. There's a general checklist down to that specific property. But the real value comes in when you can go to an owner and say, hey, look, tell me three things that you really care about for your property before you show up. And I promise I'm going to execute on it every time. You know, you want the lights on. You want the, you want the window shades open. You want the table set up a certain way. And then you put those owner requirements into your standard cleaning checklist and no matter who gets assigned to do it before manual shows up you know they have to check off that they did the three things that Emmanuel really cares about at his house but what that does is it changes the game Emmanuel shows up and he feels like you really care about him yeah. and that's it most man most most property managers will tell you you know yeah you'll lose and you'll lose an owner um if you know rental income fluctuates and it's really down and they're like trying to optimize for they're just optimizing income there's plenty of those owners but mostly you lose a property if they just feel like you don't care about them yeah 100% and and this makes it like and again Mike and I hit on this a lot it's difficult to remember everything leverage technology and system to help you remember everything so the quality is 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 all there Right. And it's almost like the point of like, you know, what I mean, like check a bunch of things and go by a process. This just helps you with that. And as Jeremy was talking, like it even helps you with like, for example, our guest note, like get a message if the property is clean two hours before check in, they get an automated message be like, hey, the property is ready for you. Again, it's all those things that make guests think that you care and you do care, but like it helps it like kind of streamline. Because how often do people ask you, hey, let me know if the property is clean or ready beforehand also you guys help sell orphan bookings before or after right so like if there is the properties available the day before or the day after the thing will automatically send a message be like hey do you want to book it for half the price a day early given we still have to do it right once the lead comes in there is no way for you to guys automatically overwrite our property management system so we have to do it but that's all things that are there to help you maximize your income because you never know. Maybe grandma is driving down and she was going to add an extra stop anyways. And she'll come to you a day early for half of the revenue, right? For half of the booking fee. So yep. it doesn't matter your level, just matters the streamline aspect of it and the guarantee quality control. Because what we are lacking as an industry, what we're growing into as an industry is the quality control aspect of it that the hotel especially the luxury hotel side has down to the T is mm -hmm. that replicable experience. And if you're a professional host like me or like Mike, 
it's amazing for a client of yours to know as long as I book with E or as long as I book with Mike, any of these houses, I'm going to get the same quality control and the same quality cleaning that I get across the board. And that's what makes you a hospitality brand, even in your nicheness of maybe you have six cabins here, but at least your guests know anytime you book one of our places, our systems are dialed in exactly the same. So we deliver quality, quality over and over that you can guarantee and count on. The same way you do for the Ritz now, the same way you do for the Four Seasons. Like you know that you're going to get the quality experience. And then to Jeremy's note, it's like you can customize it and have the notes in there and it just helps you streamline it. I was going to ask Jeremy, because obviously you guys are seeing a lot of properties, a lot of people leveraging the software. What have you kind of seen as like, I guess, best practice or certain things that some of like the, I don't want to call them better hosts, but some of the season like pros are doing, you know, you gave some good tips around like leveraging the software and certain things, but are there certain things that you're seeing not everybody's taking advantage of that they should be mm. or that they could be? Yeah, I think it's, um, I think customizable, I think you see seasoned operators really think about how they build their relationships with their, with their cleaners, um, whether they're in-house or they're, or they're just like really tight service providers, the seasoned operators build really close relationships with them and then really leverage them as an extension of their team. Right. And like put a lot of the brand, it's very brand forward. They're included in the, they're really included in the company. Um, and I just think that's like a seasoned move to think about. Well, I mean, first you're seeing the seasoned folks are really focused on efficiency, right? They want to make sure that, um, they can operate in a super efficient manner. And I think this goes back to what Emmanuel was saying, you know, short-term rentals are great, but what every guest wants is that combination of an authentic experience that feels a little more natural, feels like I'm part of the fabric of, you know, the location where I am, or I'm like at the beach, I'm in the mountains, it's a great location, um, unique property, but a predictable experience as if I was in a hotel. Right. Mm -hmm. I think we all forget that like every time you book a vacation rental, um, you're rolling, you know, guests, consumers are rolling the dice a little bit. They're not exactly sure what they're going to get. And as an industry, I think we're at the early innings of layering in that quality professionalism and predictability to sort of drive that. But I don't know if that totally answers your question, but I did want to, I wanted to sneak that in because Emmanuel was talking about it. I think yeah. that's, that's, that's spot on. It, uh, yeah. Like I, we've, I've done a few podcasts or we've done a few podcasts where I talk, like, especially the cleaner thing. Like I tell, like anytime I go to one of my markets, I'll take my cleaners out to dinner. We send them cards. Like it, like they are part of the family. And we listen to them. So if there's certain things like a while back, we were always using duvet covers and they were like, listen, this sucks. Like, can we please do triple sheets? And I was like, I don't even know what that is. And they explained it. And I'm like, will that help you? And they're like, absolutely. And I'm like, okay, fine. Like I'll make that investment and we'll get rid of the duvets and we'll do triple sheets. And they were like, thank you. Right. Like listen and make them feel heard and part of the team. And they will go above and beyond. Like they're my eyes and ears out there. So they're the ones that are going to go to the properties, right? You just skirted that hurricane. It's making its way up towards me. They're over there right now, prepping it, like storing all the outdoor furniture, doing all that stuff. I don't even need to ask them. Like they're just going to do it. We will ask them to follow up, but they're over, they're going to do it anyway, you know, because most, I think it's starting to get better, but most operators, especially amateurs, it's almost like they treat the cleaners like, second class citizens, which is the complete opposite approach. Yeah. Like, yeah. How, how little can I pay somebody to clean this property? And I'm like, no, no. How, how, how much can I pay up. them to retain amazing people to give a great experience and cause me zero headaches? Should yeah. be the process. It should be. How much can you, how much can you pay them? And, um, you know, it's like, just, just think about the situation you would be in without them. You know, it would be impossible to operate without them. Um, so they should be treated, you know, indispensable. I think another thing seasoned folks are 
they're focused on efficiency and then they're focused on, you know, how many back to backs and how quickly they can sort of manage, the, how effectively they can manage the turnover process. Mm -hmm. um, those sort of orphan nights or gap nights that Emmanuel was talking about. You know, my biggest gripe there is that our clients won't tell us just how much money they make off those, off those, that guest night functionality, because so many people take them up on it. Um, and it's an incredibly lucrative, it's a nice piece of functionality. Yeah. Ask them the message in time. And a lot of the game of that is like, you've already initiated text messaging with them. You already have a nice conversation going with them. You already checked. You know, this wasn't the first text they got during their, during their stay with you. They got one about like, how's the property? And then just at the right time, at the timely, you know, halfway through, it's like, Hey, you can stay if you want for a discount. Like, let me know if you want to stay another night and just, it's that soft sell that really makes a difference. Yeah. Especially if you're in one of those like big, uh, drivable markets where changing your departure is not that complicated, right? Obviously, if you're in a place like Hawaii where people are like oh, yeah. in and out, that's a different story. But if you're in a drivable market, it's such a low hanging fruit. And especially now that, that occupancy is getting, is getting squeezed is those little things where like they add up to the extra revenue um, that can make a difference. Um, we could go in so many different directions, but I also, we have to be respectful of time today. Yeah, no, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. So I'm a huge uh, fan. I don't know if you guys were able to tell, but I'm a huge fan. I appreciate okay. it. But it's also because like, I appreciate how much better it made our business and how much better it makes it for my cleaners and my team, like my team lead cleaner helps her make, do her job better. And my head of maintenance and cleaning makes his job better because also there is no arguing. Like, do we do this? Yes, there is pictures, evidence. Is done, took us this long. Here are the receipts. Here's the access code to the owner closet. Here's the access code to the thing. And then the moment you're done, they close it. They can't access the information anymore. So you're just like, it makes your business a business. Yeah. And those photo it. that that photo, I appreciate that. The um that that photo validation on the on every task is really it's really impactful. And the fact yes. that you have a record of what the property looked like before. We forget like, you know, it's called short-term rentals. It's the same thing. You would never, you know, you'd never let somebody, you never rent out a place for like a year to somebody without having some sort of record of what the property looked like before they moved in and then getting some record about what it looks like when they move out. And yet there's plenty of people who think about like a short-term rental. We think about the week being, you know, or a few days being different, but in fact, like, it always strikes me as a little crazy. You don't have like really good records. So lots of people don't have great records about what the property looked like before somebody showed up. And then when they leave, so if there's any questions about what happened at the property, what's the condition, what's the liability, um, you've got it all, you've got it all solved. hundred percent, hundred percent. Well, before we get into the last question, Jeremy, I want to thank you and acknowledge you for uh, building an amazing app that helps a ton of short-term rental operators. So thank you. And um, thank you for coming on here and, and sharing your knowledge and wisdom with us. Um, so for all the folks out there that want to get in touch with you and Breezeway, what's the easiest way for them to do that? Yeah, VIP at Breezeway.io. They just shoot us a message and um, we're happy to talk. We do a ton of like, we do a ton of just helping people. We get a lot of people who come to us. We've helped 2,000 different managers. You know, we've got like 170,000 units on the platform. We've helped a lot of people think about their business and like they may have checklists already, but like how they can sort of craft their team and, and rethink their operations. Part of what we do is in the onboarding. So happy to even just chat with people about it. Love that. Love that. Thank you. And the last question that we ask all of our guests is, what is your number one secret to success with short-term rentals? Woof perseverance um so you, you gotta you gotta push through you gotta be ready to you gotta be ready to wake up and chop some wood this is a really interesting market and it's dynamic but you have to stay on your toes and so i think perseverance is the is the key to success in this very cool niche world of travel and property technology boom mm. there you have it guys well 
Thank you again, Jeremy. Appreciate it. All listeners out there, thank you guys so much. Again, is a uh, if you're enjoying these episodes, make sure you leave us a review on iTunes or Spotify or wherever you hear this. It helps the algorithms push us out to more hosts like you to add some value. So again, thank you guys so much, and we'll talk to you next week. Hey, STR Nation, if you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and leave us a review. And in the comments, let us know what topics you want us to cover on upcoming episodes, and we'll make sure to get that in the books for you. And if you really want to learn how to launch, automate, and scale your short-term rental business, if you want to go deeper, then check out our free masterclass at strsecrets.com.